So we're gonna come in here for our sunset tree painting and lay down the base for our sky. A little bit of light blue, followed with some dark blue, just some light streaks across. If you guys are just finding the channel, make sure to check out the beginner spray paint art tutorial series and make sure to hit subscribe for more spray paint art tutorials. From there, we're gonna come in with some red. Again, I'm keeping the paint very light. I'm just gonna go across and you know, add and blend in to the blue part of our sky. Then I'm gonna work in some orange. These fades are always tricky. I'm working on a very small little piece of poster board. So it can be a little bit easier if you do go ahead and work on a bigger canvas size. From there, we're gonna add in some yellow. This really brightens up that sunset look, gives some kind of pop to the horizon. And we're gonna come back in with a little bit of baby blue. At this stage, I'm really just tinkering with you know, the blend of colors, making sure they fit, making sure things aren't getting too kind of uh, misty from overspray and just getting a nice little base down for our sky. So I'm gonna rock pretty much with this. For this next stage, I am gonna use a little cloud stencil. Uh, so just cloud shapes cut into poster board. I'm probably gonna do a tutorial on how to create one of these in the future because it is a helpful uh, little tool to have. I'm just gonna come in and lay down some really, really light clouds, being careful not to kind of stir up any paint underneath and work in uh, kind of the base for what's gonna be the last little component to our sky. Uh, so with that, I'm just getting a nice clear spray. I'm actually going through on the side there and testing out a few different kinds of paint. Uh, in the end, I'm gonna come in with some Rust-Oleum Quick Color White and just, yeah, really lightly miss the edges of those cloud lines, uh, trying to get kind of a uniform look to them, a nice little faded uh, cloud texture, if you will. And you'll just see me kind of work across here and work in some clouds. Um, I'm having some issues with, uh, you know, the poster board touching some paint underneath here and there. And you'll see me just go in and fill those areas with a nice light little mist. Uh, just laying down the foundation for what's going to be our sky background here. Um, I do like the contrast, the simple fade there of the sunset in the background. So uh, yeah, this is just going to be a nice little icing on the cake. If you guys are new to spray paint art, uh, some of this stuff is going to be a bit over your head and that's okay. Uh, we all have to start somewhere. If you're just getting into this, check out the tutorial series. There's going to be a lot of different videos in there to give you the basics and give you a foundation to be able to do some interesting paintings like this one. Leave a comment down below, guys, if you have an idea for a future tutorial. I do definitely uh, need some suggestions. My uh, creative ideas are running a bit low, so drop a comment down below. If you have something you wanna see in a tutorial in the future, uh, let me know, I'll do my best to accommodate. The more specific it is, um, it can be tough. I get a lot of requests for like specific uh, characters, stuff like that. That's not really my style, but if you have some ideas or some techniques you're struggling with, hit me up. I'm always happy to help. Um, we're just going to, yeah, finish off on these clouds here. There's a lot of little sections of this painting where I'm actually just tinkering around, fine tuning. I did make a point of this one uh, to take my time and slow down. Oftentimes I rush through and wind up, you know, not happy with my result in the end. So this one, I made a pack to slow things down a little bit. Those are some happy looking clouds if you ask me. So it's time to move on to our foreground. Just adding a little bit of blue up top. Gonna streak that sky out a little bit. Add a little bit of mist to my clouds just to even them out. Then we're gonna come in here. I'm using a really, really fine tip uh, spray nozzle for Montana Gold. I'm just gonna make the foundation here for uh, my little front terrain. It's gonna be pretty dark in the foreground and we're gonna just add a tree uh, kind of following up into the sky there. It's gonna go down, it's no different than making mountains. Uh, I'm gonna come in with some white here uh, to bridge the gap and give the rock some texture, if you will. So we're gonna come in, bomb some white on top. And we're gonna come in with a good old trusty plastic grocery bag. And we're gonna go ahead and texturize the mountains. I'm gonna pop in and just touch up clouds. This is kind of the last opportunity I'll have to touch those. A 
little bit more white for good measure and in with our plastic bag this technique is all over the beginner spray paint art tutorial series so if you want to learn how to do this uh, go ahead and check out those videos that go into a lot more detail uh, with how you can get this effect with spray paint if you've been painting along with these videos and you want to be featured in an upcoming video pop on over to reddit join the subreddit same name as the channel and submit your art to be featured in a future video I'm building a little community over there last time i checked we had 10 members really appreciate you guys checking it out uh nonetheless just a hub for you guys to share and uh you know talk about spray paint art ask questions maybe i can give you some advice and help you along the spray paint art journey guys you're gonna need a brush for this painting uh, you're also gonna need a artist or sea sponge so that is required i'm gonna use a little foam brush and i'm gonna use a fine tipped uh kind of regular paint brush gonna come in here and just map out my tree Guys, this does not have to be difficult. Uh, just go ahead and keep it super, super simple. We're gonna be covering up most of our branches anyway. So I'm gonna put a little focus on the tree trunk. Uh, with that, I'm using black and orange mixed together. I'm gonna make sure to factor in kind of a light source and keep one side a little bit shaded, the other side a little bit more uh, you know, highlighted and work in the general shape of my tree gonna go as I need and add some black add some orange and work in uh, the base of our tree here happy little trees guys channel your inner Bob Ross um, play around with this stuff you're not gonna be perfect at it instantly uh, but with a little bit of practice and honestly just not overthinking it uh, you can get some pretty cool results make sure to subscribe guys if you are enjoying this video it helps me greatly and it helps us grow the aerosol community this is where I use a foam brush and as the paint soaked in here uh, the foam brush tip that's kind of a bit uh, you know pointed uh, started to kind of square out on me and it was getting harder and harder to do details so I used this brush as far as I could uh, this is just fully disposable pretty much one use toss it away uh, the other brush I use, I use quite a bit, and uh, to avoid the paint drying on that brush and making my life a nightmare, uh, when I'm done, I usually just spray it down with some clear coat really good, wipe it off on a paper towel, rinse, repeat, and that brush has carried me through uh, for quite a long time now. The worst is if you forget to clean it, and then you're kind of hooped. So uh, to clean it, I just use Rust-Oleum clear coat. In this painting, I'm using mainly Montana Gold, a little bit of Rust-Oleum, uh, quick color which is kind of an off brand of rust-oleum a little bit more transparent and I also use a bit of rust-oleum clear coat uh, you see there that was my fat brush uh, that last branch doesn't look quite right so I switched to this fine tip paintbrush just gonna go in and kind of fiddle with this tree make uh, some progress here with my branches and just even out the color of it as well. Like I said, I do want it to kind of be shaded in one little section uh, on one side, part of me, and then uh, a little bit more light on the other. So just working in basic kind of shapes. Trees come in all shapes and sizes, so do not overthink it. Uh, it does not have to look exactly like mine, and it certainly doesn't have to look perfect. If you guys are painting along with the video and you have you know an end result to share make sure to share over on the subreddit uh r aerosol uh, gonna be a hub for us to kind of you know share work with each other uh see those of you who've painted along answer some tips and questions uh that might come up and just a way to even brag if you're happy with uh your your painting rock it out share with us we'd love to hear from you over on the Arisotto subreddit. This is the stage I'm just kind of adding some subtle detail and shading there to the base of the tree. Uh, I'm not super proficient with painting with a brush. I usually do it for like things like trees, a couple other little items. 
Um, but I'm no acrylic painter by any means. So uh, it is a good tip or it is a good trick, part of me, to have in your arsenal in the spray paint repertoire. Now we're coming in with the sea sponge and I'm just dipping it in the black paint uh, and tapping onto my poster board here. I do kind of curl up the edges of the sponge to make sure all the right spots are making contact. Uh, it does take a little bit of finesse and a little bit of getting used to, uh, but once you got the hang of it, super easy to go and add some foliage to your trees, backgrounds, um, you know, making little even kind of evergreen trees off in the distance. Always like to have some of this stuff. I pick mine up at Michael's. Uh, dollar stores sometimes carry them or various art stores. So check those out if you want to grab some sea sponge. Bit of a laundry list of items for today's painting. Uh, but again, I want to share new different tips and techniques with you guys. Uh, so don't shy away from making a little bit of an investment in your art. Uh, sometimes that can make quite a bit of difference. If you have minimal tools, don't worry. You can go ahead and even take an old kind of winter sock, turn it inside out, kind of bunch up the ends uh, into a little kind of, you know, dabbing pad and go ahead and use that in the same way I'm using the sponge. So you can use different household items uh, and be creative. There's not really a rule book for this type of art. Uh, so do something innovative. If you have interesting tips and techniques for making trees, for any other form of spray paint art, uh, share them with us. We'd love to hear. Going in now, and I'm just working in a little bit of, of white and really, really subtle uh, highlights onto my tree here, onto the foliage. This is really starting to come together and I'm digging the way it looks. There's not gonna be a whole lot more to this painting. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, keep adding our little highlights, keep playing around. I'm gonna go in, play with the tree. I'm gonna add some shadows kind of coming off of the tree, accent the uh, the foreground a little bit as well. And, you know, again, just tinker with this, take my time, not just churn out a fast result, but really slow things down. Uh, unless you're painting in front of a crowd, there's no reason to rush and fly through the painting. Uh, everyone sees these guys on the street doing this phenomenal art within like 10 minutes and they want to emulate that. I get it. Keep in mind, even this video ran about twice as long uh, as it shows here on YouTube. I edited out all the dead spots to make sure it flows along nicely and, uh, you know, cut out all the dead space. Uh, that being said, this painting took me closer to about 40 minutes you know, when you factor in little moments of letting it dry, grabbing new supplies. Um, so slow it down, take your time. That's my number one spray paint art advice, especially when you're just starting out. Uh, there's no rush. Here I'm just gonna go in. Uh, on camera here, it looks quite nice. Uh, that little terrain and the kind of light highlight edge of it. I'm just gonna work in some kind of grass, if you will. Uh, and just darken up that edge a little bit, make it contrast a little bit more uh, with the background and just play around with the kind of edge line there of that uh, terrain. And I'm gonna darken out either side there too, just to give it a nice uniform look and really make that foreground pop. So I'm just streaking the paintbrush up, very, very small amount of paint, uh, adding a little bit as I go. Across the board here, guys, I'm using spray paint. All I'm doing is spraying it off to the side and kind of rolling my paintbrush in it, making sure I take it, take off any excess and uh, working through it that way. So 100% spray paint in this painting. Again, I did use a couple different brands, but the main staple here is gonna be Montana Gold. Throughout the painting, I also did use a few different spray paint tips. Uh, so I was using some kind of thin, uh, tips to make sure my sprays weren't flying around in a big wide pattern. Uh, I also used a fat boy tip for you know a certain part of the piece and I'm just in kind of experimentation mode myself uh, trying to find different things that work and take this to the next level. It's going to carry in that foliage over to the kind of shadow edge of my tree. I think that's looking kind of nice. The little light highlight area in front of that grass is making a nice kind of depth of field look to the painting. And we're just gonna go in and keep uh, tinkering with it until we're happy. Less is more, 
very little amount of paint and just working towards the kind of result that clicks in my eye uh, as kind of being perfect or at least good enough. Uh, sometimes done is better than perfect. And the good thing is poster board is cheap. So if it's not working out for you, don't, don't be ashamed to give up. Start a new painting and, and give it another go because sometimes it does take multiple tries. Uh, I can't tell you guys how many videos I've filmed where I filmed the whole painting, uh, something's gone terribly wrong, and I've had to just abandon both the painting and the video. I know your frustration, I know the pain, uh, but once again, done is better than perfect, so don't stress too, too much. Adding in some shadows, so we've gone back here. I think I'm using Rust-Oleum Quick Color Black. We're just darkening that out ever so slightly. And then we're gonna go work in the edge line on the other side here. Uh, just giving it, you know, again, that foreground look, making that background pop a little bit more. At the end there, you'll see my spray paint uh, piece here is taped down with some painters tape we're gonna remove that and it's gonna reveal a nice little border uh, definitely not required I just like it because it keeps my painting in place for these videos to make sure I'm not having to uh, adjust all the time coming in here adding some black kind of orangey spray paint to the edge line here just cleaning that edge up a little bit and fading it down into the rest of the terrain If you're painting along, you've kind of hit this phase. Uh, maybe yours looks different than mine. Maybe you're you're happy with where you're at. Feel free to stop as soon as you like the result. Uh, for me, again, I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I did look at the details on this painting. I did kind of go in and make sure um, I was satisfied at least with it. And I think the end result is pretty cool. Adding some black, adding some orange, getting my color to kind of look exactly how I want off to the side on my table here before I go in. And just extend that tree out a little bit more, make sure that's kind of popping on the horizon line too. And we're gonna work through that edge line of that mountain. I'm just gonna go in play with my paint color a little bit more. I do want a bit of a distinction between uh, that tree and the rest of the mountaintop here. So we're gonna go in now, a uh, really, really fine line. I think I actually added a bit of clear coat to my little uh, paint mix off to the side here, just getting things flowing a little bit better. Uh, gave me a bit of a wash too, so in the end the result was kind of transparent and allowed me to blend it in a little bit easier. Uh, just like on your canvas here, the paint is gonna dry and get a bit gummy. Uh, so if you're using a little reservoir off to the side to put paint onto your brush, you are gonna get it a bit goopy over time. Just keep adding paint as need be. And uh, yeah, I don't, don't be shy to add a little bit of clear coat, like a tiny little burst uh, to play around with, with the kind of uh, viscosity of the paint here. That had a really good effect for me. That was the only part of the painting that wasn't quite clicking. Uh, that line between the clouds and the terrain didn't really look uh, super definitive. So I'm glad I went in, spent a little bit more time and cleaned that up here. Make sure you guys stick around to the very end of the video. My favorite part is always peeling that tape off and we're nearing that point right now. So um, just gonna go in, keep playing around. I, I know again, um, not the most exciting thing to watch, 
but I did want to keep you know these little parts in the video so you guys could see uh, you know the process all the way through and see kind of how I work through these paintings Coming in with my little clay modeling tool and going to sign the bottom corner of this painting. Don't forget to sign your stuff. You never know. Uh, maybe one day it'll be worth tons of money and your name won't even be on it. So make sure you sign your paintings. go ahead peel off the tape and take a look at this painting in all of its glory And there it is. That's our finished result for today's painting. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Once again, make sure to check out the subreddit. Join the Aristotle community. Leave a like down below. Hit subscribe. And I'll see you guys again in a future spray paint art tutorial.